the Immaculate Conception of our Blessed Virgin Mary possesses so many mysteries and so many prerogatives. In other words, there's so many gifts that come with this incredible grace. And in our segment today, we're going to talk about what we introduced in the last segment, the preternatural gifts and the supernatural gifts and why Our Lady deserves the particular, the, the greater quality and quantity honor that we should be paying her. Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And we are going through the proclamation, the solemn papal proclamation of Our Lady's Immaculate Conception, but we're going to try to also unwrap some of its mystery and some of its beauty. Now, in our last segment, we talked just by way of introduction on the gifts that Adam and Eve had from the moment of their creation. And the medieval theologians, as well as confirmed by the catechism of the Catholic Church, tell us that Adam and Eve had what we call the natural gifts, an ordinary uh, human nature, body, soul, intellect, and will. They had preternatural gifts, gifts above ordinary human nature, uh, and this would include immortality of the body, infused knowledge, and integrity, a perfect harmony between reason and emotions. Thirdly, they had the supernatural gifts, a life of grace. Uh, they were in the family of God. Now, let's explore these a little bit more, and then we want to apply them to Our Lady. If Adam and Eve lost these through original sin, and Mary was preserved from the effects of original sin, what does that conclude for us about Our Lady? But let's, let's delve into these a little bit more precisely. When we're talking about the preternatural gifts of Adam and Eve, we're talking about the ability that uh, Adam had infused knowledge. We see this in Genesis because he was given the gift to name the animals. Uh, typically, by infused knowledge, we don't mean that Adam knew everything of the future, but that Adam had a special ability to recognize the providence of God. That this comes with grace, and it came with the first grace that Adam and Eve received. Secondly, that Adam and Eve had immortality of the body. Uh, they're not going to be subject to disease. Why? Because disease enters the world, we understand, we, we have revealed to us in Genesis, through sin. Uh, God's not going to create us having to go through cancer and all the other things we go through physically. That's the sad result of our sin. So Adam and Eve had the incorruptibility of the body. Thirdly, Adam and Eve had what we call integrity, perfect obedience of the emotions to the intellect and the will. Again, see this from the perspective of God the Father. God the Father is not going to create us with an inbuilt rebellion, with an inbuilt dysfunction, if you will. He's going to create us harmoniously with a proper hierarchy of balance and order and authority. And so when Adam and Eve were to say, all right, it's Friday, we're going to fast, then their emotions said, okay, we're going to fast. There would be a, a sense of anthropological obedience, if you will. For us, as we know, if we say Friday we're going to fast, uh, we have rebellion. Uh, we think of filet mignon and pepperoni pizza. We don't think of obedience in terms of our emotions saying, yeah, whatever you want, intellect and will, we'll, we'll go with this. Uh, so this is a result of the fall, this, this disobedience, this rebellion of the passions to the intellect and the will. But for Adam and Eve, it, it starts that way in order. And then, you know, in this order of infused knowledge, lack of uh, corruptibility of the body and integrity, Adam and Eve also are, are created in God's family. So now they fall. Okay. Original sin happens. And as a result, Adam and Eve lose the preternatural gifts and the supernatural gifts. What does that mean specifically? That means that instead of infused knowledge, Adam and Eve know with difficulty, with obscurity. Man still seeks the good, but it's difficult to get it right. Secondly, disease enters the world. We have the corruptibility of the body. We have death through the corruption of the body. And thirdly, we have this rebellion between the intellect and the will and the passions. So Adam and Eve lose the three preternatural gifts, and they also lose the supernatural gift. What does that mean? It means they're outside of God's family. They're outside of grace. Now, mercifully, we have a remedy for the supernatural gifts. As we know, Jesus Christ dies on the cross. 
He merits eternal life for us if we choose to accept this tremendous gift, this gift at the price of the blood of Jesus. But we have to be baptized. See, through baptism, we regain our supernatural gifts. We're back into the family of God. But we do not regain our preternatural gifts. Those are lost for all time. Now, we can, we can gain some ground in some of these areas through uh, a greater purity of mind. We can know things better um, and we can have more control of our body through self-mastery, but we never entirely get back our preternatural gifts. Let's apply all this to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary was preserved from original sin and its effects. What does that mean? That means Mary keeps her supernatural gifts. In fact, she has an abundance of supernatural gifts. She's full of grace. Why? Because of her vocation. She's going to be the mother of Jesus and she's going to be the co-redemptrix with Jesus. So she gets graces according to her vocation and they're super abundant. But also, very interestingly, let's note, Mary's going to keep her preternatural gifts. She's not going to lose those. That means Mary is going to have a natural incorruptibility of the body. This is why at the end of her earthly life, she's not going to die through corruption of the body. She's not going to die because she has cancer, because she has a heart failure. Um, if she dies, and we'll talk about the issue of the death of Mary later in our series, it's not going to be through the, the breakdown of the body. Secondly, Mary has an infused knowledge. Mary has a greater awareness of the things of God. Scripture attests to this because Luke several times says, Mary kept these things, pondering them in her heart. That means Mary saw the supernatural significance of things that other people did not see. She kept these things as, as valuable things in the, in, in the memory of the Immaculate Heart that would become our memory. That's how we get things like the Stations of the Cross, the full understanding of the mysteries of the Rosary. It's, it's pondering, as John Paul II would say, pondering these things of Jesus through Mary's heart. So Mary saw the supernatural uh, elements of these things and kept them in her heart. And thirdly, Mary is going to have integrity. Mary is not going to have concupiscence. You and I battle with concupiscence. That's part of a redeemed yet fallen creature. That means we still have that interior inclination to sin. Doesn't mean we're intrinsically evil like some of the Lutheran uh, concepts would, would have us believe that man is corrupt by nature. No, no. It's bad enough to be good and fallen. We don't need to be corrupt. Man seeks the good, but he seeks so with, with, with an obscurity, and he seeks so also with concupiscence. That's an interior inclination to sin. Mary had no interior inclination to sin. Mary had a perfect harmony between her passions and her intellect and the will. Mary had external temptation because that comes from Satan. But Mary doesn't have internal temptation, which comes from a lacking of the body. So this, this means that Mary had not only a fullness of grace, but she has a lack of corruption of the body. And that's why we're going to see the assumption of Our Lady is the natural effect of her immaculate conception. Mary has a greater knowledge of the things of God, uh, and that's why she is the seat of wisdom. And thirdly, Mary has uh, this integrity where, as the Council of Trent said, she never committed venial sin. And that's because she didn't have an interior inclination, but she also never said yes to external temptation. My friends, it's the glories of Our Lady. We will never do her service, but it's, it's wonderful to even try to tap the richness of who Our Lady is in virtue of things like her Immaculate Conception. This is Mark Miravalli with Mary Cast. Thanks for being with us. God bless you.